Hey, Shalom. Happy January 17th. Is that the right date? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Happy January 17th. Uh, today, I hope you're enjoying this Through the Bible in a Year with Big Daddy Biggs. And uh, today's scriptures are going to be chapters, Exodus chapters 15 through 18. So, um, I, I'm going to ask you, like I ask you every day, if you like them, give them a thumbs up and share them with your friends because if it's a blessing to you it may be a blessing to somebody else the bible says that here uh, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of god so if you share this with your friends you may actually this may have a life changing uh, effect on their life for the better and not because i'm reading it but because hearing faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of god which is what we're reading. So, yeah, uh, share them if, you, if you're blessed by them. And you know what? Without any further ado, let's start with Exodus chapter 15. What do you say? Song of Moses and Miriam. Then Moses and Benai Yisrael sang this song to Adonai. I will sing to Adonai, for he, has, for he is highly exalted. The horse and its rider he has thrown into the sea. Adonai is my strength and my song, and he has become my salvation. This is my God, and I will glorify him, my Father's God, and I will exalt him. Adonai is a warrior. Adonai is his name. Pharaoh's chariots and his army he has hurled into the sea, and his chosen captain, captains have sunk into the sea of reeds. The deeps cover them. They sank to the depths like a stone. Your right hand, Adonai, is glorious in power. Your right hand, Adonai, dashes the enemy to pieces. <clears throat> in the greatness of your excellency, you've, you overthrow those who resist you. You send forth your wrath. It consumes them as stubble. With the blast of your nostrils, the waters piled up. The floods stood upright as a heap. The deeps became firm ground in the heart of the sea. The enemy said, I will pursue, I will overtake, I will divide the spoil. My lust shall gorge them. I will draw my sword and my hand will destroy them. You blew with your wind, the sea covered them. They sank like lead in the mighty waters. Who is like you, Adonai, among the gods? Who is like you, glorious in holiness, awesome in praises, doing wonders? You stretched out your right hand. The earth swallowed them. You, in your loving kindness, led the people you have redeemed. You guided them in your strength to your holy habitation. When the peoples hear, they will tremble. Anguish will seize the inhabitants of Philistia. Then the chiefs of Edom are terrified. Trembling grips Moab's mighty men. All of Canaan's inhabitants will melt away. Terror and dread will fall on them. By the greatness of your arm, they will become as a stone till your people cross over, Adonai, till the people whom you purchased cross over. You bring them in and plant them in the mountain of your inheritance the place, Adonai, that you have made for yourself to dwell in, the sanctuary, Adonai, which your hands have prepared. Adonai will reign forever and ever. For Pharaoh's horses with his chariots and his horsemen went into the sea, but Adonai brought the waters of the sea back over them. Yet Benai Yisrael walked in the midst of the sea on dry ground. Then Miriam the prophetess, Aaron's sister, took a tambourine in her hand, and all the women went out after, the, after her with tambourines and with dancing, as Miriam sang to them, Sing to Adonai, for he is highly exalted. The horse and its rider he has thrown into the sea. Bitter waters made sweet. Then Moses led Israel onward from the Sea of Reeds. They went out into the wilderness of Shur. But they traveled three days in the wilderness and found no water. When they came to Mara, they could not drink from the waters because they were bitter. On account of this, it was called Mara. 
So the people complained to Moses, saying, What are we going to drink? So he cried out to Adonai, and Adonai showed him a tree. When he threw it into the waters, they were made sweet. There he made a statue and an ordinance for them, and there he tested them. He said, If you diligently listen to the voice of Adonai your God, do what is right in his eyes. Pay attention to his mitzvot and keep his all his decrees. I will put none of the diseases on which I have put on the Egyptians, for I am Adonai who heals you. Then they came to Elim, where there were twelve springs of water and seventy palms, so they camped there by the waters. Chapter 16 Manna from Heaven they journeyed on from Elim, and the entire community of Benai Yisrael came to the wilderness of Sin, which is between Elim and Sinai, on the fifteenth day of the second month after leaving the land of Egypt. But the whole congregation of Benai Yisrael murmured against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. Benai Yisrael said to them, if only we had died by the hand of Adonai in the land of Egypt, when we sat by pots of meat, when we ate bread until we were full. But you have brought us into the wilderness to kill this entire congregation with hunger. Then Adonai said to Moses, Behold, I will rain bread from heaven for you. The people will go out and gather a day's por portion every day so that I can test them to find out whether they will walk according to my Torah or not. So on the sixth day, when they, when they prepare what they bring in, it will be twice as much as they gather day by day. So Moses and Aaron said to all B'nai Yisrael, In the evening you will know that Adonai has brought you out from the land of Egypt, and in the morning you will see the glory of Adonai. For he heard your complaining against him. What are we? You complain against us? Then Moses said, Adonai will give you meat to eat in the evening and enough bread to fill you in the morning. Since Adonai hears your complaints that you mutter against him, what are we? You, your complaining is not against us, but against Adonai. Moses said to Adonai, Say to all the congregation of Benai Israel, Come near before Adonai, because he has heard your complaining. Then, as Aaron spoke to the whole congregation of Benai Israel, they looked toward the wilderness, and the glory of Adonai appeared in the cloud. Adonai spoke to Moses, saying, I have heard the complaining of Benai Israel. Speak to them, saying, At dusk you will eat meat, and in the morning you will be filled with bread. When, then you will know that I am Adonai, of Adonai your God. So when evening fell, quails came, came up and covered the camp. Moreover, in the morning, there was a layer of dew all around the camp. When the layer of dew was gone on the surface of the desert was a thin flake-like frost as fine as the frost on the ground. When Benai Yisrael saw it, they said one to another, What is it? for they did not know what it was. Then Moses said to them, It is the bread that Adonai has given you to eat. This is the word that Adonai commanded. Every man is to gather according to his needs, an omer per person according to the number of people per household. Each man is to take it for those who are in his tent. Benai Israel did so, and some gathered more, some less. When they measured it with an omer, those who gathered more had nothing left over, and those that gathered less did not lack at all. Every man gathered according to his appetite. Also Moses said to them, Let no one save any of it until the morning. However, they did not listen to Moses, for some of them preserved it until the morning, but it bred worms and rotted. So Moses was angry with them. So they gathered it morning by morning, each man according to his needs, and as the sun became hot, it melted. On the sixth day they gathered twice as much bread, two omers for each individual. 
So all the leaders of the community came and informed Moses. But he said to them, what, This is what Adonai has said. Tomorrow is, Shabbat, is a Shabbat rest and a holy Shabbat to Adonai. Take whatever you would take, bake whatever you would bake, and boil what you would boil. Store up for yourselves everything that remains to be kept until the morning. So they set aside, set it aside until morning, just as Moses instructed, and it did not rot, nor were there any worms. Then Moses said, Eat today, because today is a Shabbat to Adonai. Today you will not find it in the field. You are to gather it for six days, but the seventh day is the Shabbat, and there will be none. Yet on the seventh day, some of the people went out to gather, and they found none. Adonai said to Moses, How long will you refuse to keep my misvote and my Torah? See, Adonai has given you the Shabbat. So on the sixth day, he gives you the bread of two days. Let every man stay in his place, and let no man go out on the seventh day. So the people rested on the seventh day. The house of Israel named it manna. It was like it was white like it was white like the coriander seed and tasted like wafers made with honey. Then Moses said, This is what Adonai had commanded. Let a full omer of it be kept throughout your generations, so that they may see the bread for which I fed you in the wilderness, when I brought you out from the land of Egypt. Moses said to Aaron, Take a jar and put a, put a full omer of manna, manna inside. Store it up before Adonai to, keep, to be kept throughout your generations. Just as Adonai commanded Moses, Aaron stored it up in the front of the testimony to be pre- preserved. Benai Israel ate the manna for forty years. They ate the manna until they came to an inhabited land when they came to the borders of the land of Canaan. Now, an omer is the tenth part of an ephah. Chapter 17. Test and Quarreling All the congregation of Benai Israel journeyed from the wilderness of sin in stages according to the command of Adonai and camped at Rephidim, but there was no water for the people to drink. So the people quarreled with Moses and said, Give us water to drink. And Moses said to them, Why do you quarrel with me? Why do you test Adonai? But the people thirsted for water there, and they complained against Moses and said, Why have you brought us up out of Egypt? To kill us with thirst along with your children and cattle, along with our children and cattle? So Moses cried out to Adonai, saying, What am I to do for these people? They are about ready to stone me. Adonai said to Moses, Walk before the people and take of the elders of Israel with you, along with your staff with which you struck the river. Take it in your hand and go. Behold, I will stand before you, there upon the rock of Horeb. You are to strike the rock, and water will come out of it so that the people can drink. Then Moses did just so in the eyes of the elders of Israel. The name of the place was called Masa and Merabah because of the quarreling of Benai Israel, and because they tested Adonai, saying, Is Adonai among us or not? War against Amalek. Then the Amalekites came and fought with Israel at Rephidim. Moses said to Joshua, Choose men, go out, and fight the Amalekites tomorrow. I will stand on the top of the hill with the staff of God in my hand. So Joshua did as Moses said and fought the Amalekites, while Moses, Aaron, and Hur went up to the top of the hill. When Moses held up his hand, Israel prevailed. But when he let his hand down, the Amalekites prevailed. Moses' hands grew heavy, so they took a stone and put under him, and he sat down. Aaron and Hur held up his hands, one on each side, so his hands were steady until the sun went down. 
So Joshua overpowered the Amalekites and his army with the edge of the sword. Adonai said to Moses, Write this for a memorial in the book and rehearse it in the hearing of Joshua. For I will utterly blot out the memory of the Amalekites from under heaven. Then Moses built an altar and called the name of it Adonai Nisi. Then he said, By the hand upon the throne of Adonai, Adonai will have war with Amalek from generation to generation. Exodus chapter 18, Jethro's advice. Now Jethro, <clears throat> excuse me, the priest of Midian and Moses, his father-in-law, heard about everything God had done for Moses and for his people Israel, and how Adonai had brought Israel out of Egypt. Jethro, Moses' father-in-law, had taken in Moses and Moses' wife, Zipporah, after he sent her away, with her two sons. One was named Gershom because he said, I have been an outsider in a foreign land. And the name of the other was Eliezer because he said, My father, for my father's God, is my help and delivered me from the sword of Pharaoh. So Jethro, Moses' father-in-law, came with his sons and his wife to Moses into the wilderness where he was encamped at the mountain of God. He had told Moses, I, Jethro, your father-in-law, am coming to you along with your wife and her two sons. So Moses went out to meet his father-in-law, then bowed down and kissed him. They asked each other about their welfare and went into the tent. Moses told his father-in-law all that Adonai had done to the Pharaoh and to the Egyptians for Israel's sake, as well as all the travail that had come upon them along the way and how Adonai delivered them. Jethro rejoiced for all the goodness that Adonai had shown Israel, since he had delivered them out of the hand of the Egyptians. Jethro said, Blessed be Adonai, who has delivered you out of the hand of the Egyptians and out of the hand of Pharaoh, and has delivered the people from under the hand of the Egyptians. Now I know that Adonai is great, greater than all gods, since they had acted arrogantly against them. Then, Joseph, Je, then Jethro, Moses' father-in-law, presented a burnt offering and sacrifices to God. Aaron also came along with all the elders of Israel to eat bread with Moses, his father-in-law, before God. The next day, Moses sat, at, sat to judge the people, and they stood around Moses from morning till evening. When Moses' father-in-law saw all that he did for the people, he said, What's this you're doing to the people? Why sit by yourself alone with all the people standing around from morning until evening? Moses answered his father-in-law, it's because the people come to me to inquire of God. When they have an issue, it comes to me, and I judge between a man and his neighbor, so I make them understand God's statutes and his laws. But Moses' his father-in-law said to him, What you're doing is no good. You will surely wear yourself out, as well as these people who are with you, because the task is too heavy for you. You cannot do it alone by yourself. Now listen to my voice, I will give you advice, and may God be with you. You represent the people before God and bring their cases to God. Enlighten them as to the statutes and the laws and show them the way by which they must walk and the work they must do. But you should seek out capable men out of all the people, men who fear God, men of truth, who hate bribery. Appoint them to be the rulers over thousands, hundreds, fifties, and tens. Let them judge the people all the time. Then let every major case be brought to you, but every minor case they can judge for themselves. Make it easier for yourself as they bear the burden with you. If you do this thing as God so commands you, then you will be able to endure, and all these people will go to their places in Shalom. So Moses listened to his father-in-law and did everything he said. Moses chose capable men out of all Israel and made them heads over the people, rulers of thousands, hundreds, fifties, and tens. They judged the people all the time. 
the hard cases they brought to Moses, but every small matter they judged themselves. Then Moses let his father-in-law depart, and he went on his way to his own land. Thank you for joining me, and I hope you enjoyed this. I look forward to being with you again tomorrow. Have a blessed day. Thank you. Bye.